while working on a project I needed a decent frequency counter so I recently acquired Agilent 53132 a which is a 12 digit frequency counter this is my counter unit standard crystal oscillator supply with this instrument is not good enough you need to have an optional time base you need to have an oven controlled crystal oscillator as this product is already end of life you cannot possibly buy them from Agilent so you need to look for some used unit you may possibly search for any use available online I found quite a few people online who make their board themselves but none of them is providing source this project is completely open source project all the sources available on my website and my github account I decided to first search for any used unit available online but the original ones from Agilent seems to be quite expensive you can see multiple DIY units selling on eBay. You can easily find multiple people selling them on eBay. But I had few doubts with these units, like how well the whole thing put together, what kind of parts they have used, and what kind of oven they are using. Is there any specification sheet available for the crystal oven they are using? Are they using this exact same schematic as Agilent? The units which I found online, they were quite cheaply made. And Basically none of them was providing good enough data about the oven they are using. So in the end I decided to make one myself. Of course all of them are having used crystal oscillator pulled out from some other instrument. But still a little bit of data gives a little bit more confidence. Of course I will be also using a used crystal oscillator. Nothing wrong in that. But the crystal oscillator what I am having here is MB89A. There is a specification sheet available from the manufacturer for these oscillators. Although the specification does not exactly say about the particular model but we are having here. So I did contact the manufacturer and they have provided me exact specification for the exact model what we are having here. And as for the document what they have sent me. The temperature stability characteristics of MB89A is 0.25 ppb. This is an order of magnitude better than the Agilent Ultra High Stable Oven. Daily aging characteristics of our oscillator is 0.1 ppb, which is also better than Agilent's option, ultra high stable oven, which is at 0.5 ppb. And the documentation for mb 89 a does not specify the monthly aging characteristics, but both of the oscillator, Agilent's ultra high stable oven and mb 89 a has same yearly aging characteristics, 20 ppb. Here are how PCB looks on the top side. There is a LAN pattern for big double oven oscillator and there is a LAN pattern for a small oven oscillator. These three big holes are for mounting. I am using really nice quality SMD standoffs from Virtual Electronics. This LAN pattern is for the connector which goes off to the main board. This is the back side of the PCB. There are not many components on this board. Only a comparator DAC and a reference for DAC and few passive components. There is not much to it. As I said earlier, this board has two footprints for different type of oscillators. This big footprint is meant for the big double oven kind of oscillator, which is around 51 by 51 millimeters of size, 12 volt and this footprint. And the small footprint which you see here is meant for the smaller kind of oscillators like this, CTS196 and CDS197. You can fit different types of oscillators in there. There are many oscillators which match the exact land pattern. Oscillator from Bliley NB47A1282 also exactly matches the LAN pattern here. This VDD here is selectable between 12V and 5V using a solder jumper on the back. The power supply for big oscillator is fixed to 12V because most of these come in only 12V package. VDD for small oscillator package can be switched using these two jumpers J5 and J6. The low level component specification is available in the public domain for these counters. Excellent has nice to release all the schematics below material and everything for these counters. You can easily find these reference documents. I have drawn my schematic directly referring to the low level component specification for 53132A and 53131A. This is a DAC, it's a reference chip and the differential comparator. This DAC is really nice chip. It has an internal output op -amp and the output op -amp can be configured to provide different voltages ranging from 0 to 10 volt, minus 5 to plus 5 volts and 0 to 5 volts. Our oscillator what we 
what we are having here MV 89A and these small ones CTS they only need positive voltage the big one MV 89A needs 0 to 5 volt control voltage I think these two need 0 to 4 volt control voltage so we have configured these jumpers in such a way that that voltage is 0 to 5 volts I have only sourced all of these components from a rediper source like Mouser every single part here is same or better than what low level component specification suggests our newly built board is installed in the instrument and now we need to calibrate it to get into calibration menu you need to hold the scale button and turn on the unit as I have entered the password for calibration it is showing a scale unsecured now we are in can now we are in Cal and secure menu as I have already entered the password which is same as device model number. Let's go ahead and scroll between menus. We need to calibrate time base so we'll use these buttons. We need to calibrate time base. This is the time base calibration. Let's hit enter. Now it's asking us to supply 10 megahertz into channel 1. Now you need to supply reference 10 megahertz signal into the instrument. We will be calibrating our time base against this is a true position GPS TO with a distribution board for isolated output. If you want to know more about this, GPSDO link to this project is available in the video description. GPSDO shows time locked, seven satellites, TV, TFTM is four. Right now, sky outside is not very clear. There are many clouds up there, and which is making our satellite count low and TFTM high. Channel one is directly going into our frequency counter. Channel two is connected to my oscilloscope. From the back of the unit, the 10 megahertz output is also connected to my oscilloscope. And here's how both of the waveforms compare. The yellow waveform is from GPSTO and blue waveform is the frequency counter's output. As you can see these waveforms are not in sync and they are drifting. Which implies that our oscillator is out of calibration. So we will do a calibration now. This PNC cable here is coming from my GPSTO unit. And let's now hit enter. We will see on the oscilloscope how the calibration process goes. You can see now the both of the now both of the signals are way out of sync and now just now they are in sync. Calibration algorithm is doing its thing. We are triggering on channel one so it's remain constant. Display is still showing calibrating. Seems like both of the waveforms are now in sync, but you can see they are slowly dipping. Calibration finish. I hope information here is useful. A link to the project is available in the video description.